So the lungs are covered with the pleura, the pleural membranes. The layer that sticks to the surface of the lung, the inner layer, is called what? Visceral pleura. The outer layer is called the parietal pleural. What's in the middle? Pleural fluid. Very good. What's the purpose of the pleural fluid? Prevent friction. That space between the two layers, the space that contains that fluid, is called the pleural cavity or the pleural space. Now that pleural fluid, those layers pretty much stick together. There's no air in between just fluid. Think about if you had two pieces of glass and you put the two pieces of glass together with a thin layer of water in between, the glass would slide back and forth, but you wouldn't be able to pull them apart. So under normal circumstances, the pleural fluid will provide lubrication and reduce friction. Certain things that will aggravate the condition or that will let blood or air into that space. A pleural effusion is basically an accumulation of fluid in that pleural space, not in the lung, but in the space, in the membrane around the lung. Uh, an empyema. Empyema is an accumulation of pus. It's a big time whopping nasty infection of the lung. And instead of an accumulation of fluid, which is not infected, you end up with an accumulation of infected thick pus around the lung. So a pneumothorax and a hemothorax, there's pneumo refers to air. So now we have air in that pleural cavity or hemothorax would be what? blood in that pleural cavity, not inside the lung, but in that space in between those two membranes. Let's talk a little bit about lungs expanding and collapsing. All right, so lungs can expand and collapse because of two basic principles, elastic recoil and surface tension. Elastic recoil basically refers to the stretchiness of the lung tissue. So when you blow air into a balloon, the fibers in the balloon stretch and then when the air is released, those fibers will recoil, right? Same thing happens with the lungs. If we put air into the lungs, they will stretch. And when the air is allowed to escape, the fibers will recoil. We can measure how stretchy the lungs are. Think about a balloon that's brand new out of the package and a balloon that's been laying around the house and blown up by your kids 10,000 times, right? The, the balloon that comes right out of the package is new and it's stiff and it's really hard to blow up. The balloon that's been hanging around forever is kind of limp and floppy. The difference between those two is called compliance. So if somebody has decreased compliance, that's the stiff, difficult to inflate balloon. And certain conditions can cause the lungs to become very stiff and difficult to inflate. Things like pulmonary fibrosis. Fibrosis refers to scar tissue. So there are certain conditions that will result in scar tissue accumulating in the lung tissue. It makes it very difficult to expand those lungs. There's a condition called ARDS. That's adult respiratory distress syndrome. Difficult for the lungs to inflate. Increased compliance results in, that's the, the balloon that's been laying around the house for a year and the kids blow it up 10,000 times and now it's limp and floppy. So what happens, the lungs become limp and overstretched. So it's very easy to fill them with air, but what happens when you let the air out? They don't recoil enough and the balloon never really empties out of air. Same thing happens in the lungs. And this is very apparent in conditions like emphysema and COPD. Very easy to get air in, but these patients have a hard time pushing the air out because the lungs are no longer stretchy. They don't recoil back into their unstretched positions. They have a hard time exhaling. All right, so that has to do with elastic recoil. The other concept that you should be aware of is surface tension. Anybody remember what kind of bonds hold water molecules together? Hydrogen. Hydrogen bonds. So the positive end of one is attracted to the negative end of another. So they stick together um, with a lot of force. They're attracted to each other. And I put this picture up here, these pond skater bugs. You ever see these bugs that skip across the water? They are able to walk on water because they're so light that they don't break the surface tension. The surface tension is important in the lungs because each alveoli is lined with a layer of water molecules. And remember, water molecules are polar molecules. Positive end of one, negative end of another, they're going to attract to each other. So the alveoli, under normal circumstances, want to collapse. They want to collapse on each other because those water molecules are attracted to each other but they don't collapse because the body has something called surfactants. And basically what surfactants do is they 
interrupt the surface tension. Surfactants are just special proteins and all they do is they kind of wedge themselves in between those water molecules and they disrupt that surface tension. They don't get rid of it completely but they disrupt it and because they disrupt that surface tension the alveoli are able to expand. Specialized cells in our lungs secrete surfactants. Every couple of breaths we take we take a deeper breath and that deeper breath is our body's way of getting those surfactants released. Surfactants basically disrupt the surface tension and allow the alveoli to remain open. That's the alveoli remaining expanded. But we can also think of our lungs in terms of the overall organ remaining expanded. So you've probably heard of somebody having a collapsed lung. That's where the entire lung will deflate, not just the little air sacs inside. Lung expansion, now we're uh, bigger, we're talking about the entire lung. Lung expansion depends on pressures in and around our chest. Three different pressures that we need to be aware of. Positive pressures, I just want to make a distinction between positive and negative pressure. Positive pressure would be something like if I blew on this desk, the papers would move. It's like a push. Air is matter, it has weight, it takes up space. I can push air to move things. That's a positive pressure. Negative pressure would be like a vacuum. The absence of air creates a negative pressure. So instead of pushing something, with negative pressure, it would suck it out. So three pressures when we're talking about the lungs. Atmospheric pressure, intrapulmonary pressure, and intrapulmonic pressure. Atmospheric pressure is just the air on Earth. It's all the air in the atmosphere that pushes down on us. Obviously, we don't feel it, but if you go from here to a higher elevation where there's less pressure, then you'll, then you'll feel the difference, right? So there is a pressure exerted on us all around, exerted on our chest cavity, exerted on our mouth and our airways, just from the atmosphere. Intrapulmonic pressure or intrapulmonary pressure is the positive pressure inside the lungs, pushing out on all sides. Atmospheric pressure and intrapulmonic pressure are both positive pressures. The third pressure is that intrapleural pressure. It's a negative pressure. And my favorite analogy for negative pressure is what? Anybody know? My food saver bag. And I hook up the food saver bag and the machine sucks all the air out and both sides of the bag stick together and cling to whatever's in inside, right? Inside that bag is negative pressure. If I snip off a corner of that, air will rush in and create a positive pressure. And what will happen to the two sides of the bag? They'll separate, okay, because I've introduced air in there. So the two layers, the visceral layer and the parietal layer, are stuck together because we've sucked all the air out. It's like the two layers of the food saver bag. And the only thing in between those two layers is a thin layer of fluid. Lungs remain expanded because the intrapleural pressure is negative. That is the whole reason that the lungs will remain expanded, because the layer against the lung is stuck to the layer that lines the chest cavity. Our lungs are not expanded because we blow air into them like a balloon. Our lungs remain expanded because they're sucked open and stuck to the chest cavity. So the pressure inside the lung, that intrapulmonic pressure, and outside the chest are both greater. They're both positive pressures. The lung really stays open because there's a vacuum seal between the two layers of the pleural membrane. Thank you.